I recently came across this video about clutter as a trauma response. I thought, why not explain clutter in the context of narcissistic abuse? I always say recovery after narcissistic abuse is complex because it leaves you with complex trauma and a set of trauma responses. One such response is clutter. Now, you might be wondering, what does clutter have to do with trauma? That's exactly what we are going to explore today, specifically in the context of narcissistic abuse. Hi, I am Danish, a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Today's episode is going to be all about understanding how you develop clutter as a trauma response and how to resolve it. If that sounds interesting enough and you're eager to learn more, please make sure to subscribe before we begin because your subscription to the channel always helps spread awareness about narcissistic abuse. The clutter that I'm referring here could be the pile of clothes on your chair, the untouched paperwork on your desk, or even the chaotic jumble of thoughts that seem to have taken over your mind. These are all direct, albeit silent, consequences of surviving narcissistic abuse. When we talk about clutter, it's not just about physical mess or disorganization. No, it is a sign of something far deeper, something that echoes the intense struggle you have endured. It is a testament to a silent war fought between the closed doors of your past with the narcissist. This brings us to a crucial cognitive concept, executive functioning. It is a term that might sound technical, but it is really about the everyday tasks our minds perform. Imagine your mind as a busy office, humming with activity where decisions are made, plans are laid out, and tasks are assigned. The ability to do all these efficiently is your executive functioning, a fundamental element of your cognitive process. Executive functioning is what helps you organize, plan, prioritize, and regulate your actions and emotions. But what happens when this office, your mind, is hit by a storm like narcissistic abuse? The once efficient system falters, of course. Filing cabinets are overturned, papers are scattered around, and suddenly the simple tasks like organizing, planning, or making decisions become as daunting as climbing a mountain. This is the effect of chronic stress and trauma on executive functioning. It becomes impaired. Your nervous system shuts down and you collapse internally. Now let's take a closer look at this clutter in this context. Clutter in many ways is a physical manifestation of the internal chaos. As a survivor of narcissistic abuse, you have been in a situation where someone else exerted control over your life and cluttered your emotions. The constant manipulation and gaslighting by the narcissist left you on shaky ground, always trying to navigate a shifting landscape that changed with a narcissist whims. This experience can make you feel like you have lost a part of yourself, like you have given up on your choices and your life in general. Once out of the abusive environment, the struggle to regain control begins. This struggle often reflects in your surroundings as clutter. It might seem like a paradox, but this clutter is something you have control over in a world that has felt uncontrollable for so long. This is very important to understand. It is an adaptive response, an attempt to stabilize life and experience the freedom to just be. Acquiring and holding on to physical items can also provide a comforting distraction, a way to momentarily avoid the painful introspection and healing process that awaits. These items can also symbolically fill the emotional wound left by the abuse, creating a sense of temporary solace. Now, if you have this trauma response, the first step you can take to resolve this is to recognize clutter as a sign of impaired executive functioning due to narcissistic abuse. It's not about labeling yourself as disorganized or messy. It's about understanding that your brain is responding to a traumatic experience in the best way it knows. This is your mind's survival mechanism kicking in. When you are under attack, your brain does everything it can to protect you. If that means shutting down certain areas temporarily, then that is what it will do. The clutter you see around is simply a reflection of this internal process. When we are under attack or there is an ongoing crisis in our life, all the lesser important functions such as digestion, sleep, and sexual desire, in this case, the need to sort things out or shut down. Survival is what becomes the focus. Now the question you may have is, how can I begin to address this clutter? It is a great question and a sign that you're ready to take the next step towards healing. Congratulations! Because healing begins with understanding compassion and 
gentle action. Understand that what you're experiencing is a normal response to an abnormal situation. You survived narcissistic abuse and your mind and body did what they had to do to get you through it. Show compassion towards yourself. Show compassion for yourself. Do not be hard on yourself for the state of your surroundings or your mind. Remember, you're healing from something deeply traumatic. And finally, take gentle action. Start small. It could be as simple as sorting through a pile of papers or organizing a drawer. The point is to reclaim your space and your life bit by bit at your own pace. You do not need to rush this process. Decluttering your emotions by making sense of what happened to you is also an essential part of the process as well. The more you declutter your internal chaos, the easier it will become to declutter your external environment. Clutter following narcissistic abuse is more than just an untidy space. It is a silent outcry of a mind trying to regain in control and order in the aftermath of a storm. It is a plea for understanding, for patience, and for help. By understanding this, you can approach it not with judgment, but with empathy, patience, and a shared resolve for healing. As I wrap up today's discussion, remember that you're not alone in this journey. Reach out to support groups and seek professional help. Your strength got you this far, and I can promise you it will carry you through the rest of your healing journey. Thank you for listening and joining me in today's episode. If you found this helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to help spread awareness and support. Remember, each step, no matter how small, is a step towards healing. I am Danish, and I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, let the healing begin and continue.